Hey beard, Zoomzy here, and the wait is finally over. I had you all vote on how you wanted me to review Die Dark and my face one. <laughs> so here we go. I am ready with my N Family t-shirt to talk about how Die Dark holds up to Doro Hedoro, which is Kyuyu Yoshida's previous work. And it's mainly gonna be informal, but I do have a section where I'm going to talk a little bit about the translation and nitty-gritty like collector stuff <laughs> but we're gonna keep this fun we're gonna keep this entertaining and in case you're in the dark about die dark the story follows sanko who is a teenager whose bones have the ability to grant wishes and the whole universe wants a piece of him but he's not ready to die yet so he's prepared to fight them off with the help of his friends as he searches for the person who cursed him in the first place. And this plot with the curses, oh, I forgot to mention he loves spaghetti. So if the plot about curses and a boy who loves food sounds familiar, this is essentially Doro Hedoro in space. And I don't mind that one bit. I love Doro Hedoro so much. It is such a beloved series of mine. This feels very much like its spiritual successor, I can confirm that. It has the same weird oddball humor and it also has a very dark sense of morbid humor, <laughs> which I'm into. I'm a weirdo who loves bones. We're in the bone zone. <laughs> Welcome to the bone zone. It's a dark comedy, but I do have to give a warning like Doro Hedoro, it is extremely gnarly and graphic with guts and skin being peeled off flesh and people being disemboweled. <laughs> so just be mindful of that. <laughs> also, I do have to say that the character designs feel really familiar. Um, I believe uh, Hayashida said that for Dora Hedoro, she was inspired by the band Slipknot <laughs> for the masks. And I get the same Slipknot, like, metal feeling. Like, this whole manga so far, Volume 1, it feels so metal and awesome. And it's kind of unpredictable with, like, what the fuck moments. And speaking of fuck, <laughs> um, this is translated by Seven Seas, which is different from Viz. Viz did Doro Hedoro, and I feel like they are a little bit spicier with their translations so there's a lot more foul language there's a lot more f-bombs one other thing i'll say is that i'm constantly blown away by hayashida's sheer amount of creativity and her ability to create these really amazingly fleshed out worlds and I feel like her experience working as an assistant on Blom, since the manga co is an architect, I think that it pays off so well here. And you just get this awesome space bone world. Like that's a really awesome combination. I don't see um, as many necromancy and space stories except for, um, Harrow the Ninth and Gideon the Ninth, which I did not strategically place here, but <laughs> I'm down for the necromancy, bones and space aesthetic, which blends sci-fi and fantasy, but I am down for space necromancy. It's just a cool combination. Like um, there's this little dog thing, bony skull dog that transforms into their spaceship. And that is their living, like, spaceship, and that is so freaking awesome to me. <laughs> okay, and for my last thing I want to talk about regarding the story itself is the characters themselves. I'm not sure yet how I feel about them completely. I know it's difficult to compare to Doro Hedoro since I had, like, 23 volumes to fall in love with these very morally gray, complex characters who are, like, misfit found family. I feel like maybe I'll get there. Just give me time. <laughs> I'll let you know. I might, I'll probably do a more formal scripted review 
once more volumes are out and I have a better feel of the overall characters and story. I will say so far my favorite character is Shimada Death, who is basically this all-powerful death god. The one thing I don't like regarding the translation by Seven Seas is that I believe in the Japanese they are kind of genderless. They refer to Shimada Death as a he in this one, even though they I, I they feel like gender ambiguous because they can grow boobs and then sometimes they're just like a flat skeleton form. They can grow boobies. <laughs> so <laughs> they feel like a, they they look like Mikaido meets curse to me. <laughs> and yeah. I just love Shimada Death. They're carefree and they're basically like a devil from the Doro Hedoro universe. So I'm excited to see more Shimada Death. Yeah. But yeah, I just love Shimada Death. But moving on to the nitty gritty like collector stuff, um, since I do love collecting books and manga and having them pretty on my shelf, I will say this feels really high quality. Like just regarding the paper itself, it feels like thick, substantial. It's heavy. This is heavy. You can't feel it, but it's heavy. And I really love, um, you get some colored pages in here as well. And it's nice and matte. I feel like sometimes glossy pages, it's harder for me to see the artwork. And it just feels sometimes more high quality and professional when it's matte. So I will say I do like this in physical form coming as a collector sometimes. I've been getting more digital copies because they're cheaper, but for series that I really, really love and I just want to appreciate the intricate artwork, like Hayashida has amazing, like chaotic, intricate artwork that I just want to savor. So for this, I do want to collect the physical volume. Anyways, if you've gotten a chance to check out Die Dark, let me know how you feel about it so far down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side. See ya!